So I guess we're going to make this part one of this series. So I'm going to call this part one. Part one, evaluating limits as x approaches a. Let a be some finite number. Um, so here's the first one we're going to tackle is evaluate the limit of x squared minus 5x minus 6 over x squared minus 1 as x approaches negative 1. So the first thing I'm going to try is just this idea of direct substitution. And direct substitution is what it sounds like. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this number in. I'm going to say we're looking at negative 1 and say, well, what happens if this goes to exactly to negative 1? So we'd have negative 1 squared minus 5x minus 6. Oops, sorry, minus, right? Negative 1 here, wouldn't we? And we'd have negative 1 squared here minus 1. And if you do all this math out, right, this becomes positive 1. This becomes positive 5. So 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. And this is really significant. This is called the indeterminate form. So this is indeterminate. Indeterminate. All right, you guys, this is really crucial here because if we see this form, this indeterminate form, where we have 0 over 0. First off, remember, 0 over 0 is not 1, and it's also not 0. It's undefined. But it's also a clue for us. And what that clue is, is that it makes, it should give us pause and make us suspect that this function has a hole in it. And when we say that, we, when we see this form right here, we should say to ourselves that this thing is factorable. And, and it is. It's just kind of weird looking. So this is factorable. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to look at this whole thing right here. And I'm going to factor this. And if you look at it, doesn't it factor out to the numerator to x plus 1 times x minus 6. If you refoil this, you get this thing back, wouldn't you? And we hopefully recognize the bottom as the difference of squares, right? So that's x plus 1 times x minus 1, isn't it? And this is f of x. So this thing factors out, right? This x plus 1 factors out, doesn't it? Now look what happens. Now if we go back and we look at f of negative 1 again. Look what happens now. Right, we would get we would get negative 7 over negative 2, wouldn't we? How did I do that? I just, right, I just put this in. Negative 1 here, and I put the negative 1 in here, didn't I? The negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus negative, uh, negative 1 plus negative 6 is negative 7. So here's our answer. So the limit is this. So the answer is this. So the limit is our function f of x up there. Let's this function be f of x. Approaches negative 1 is equal to 7 halves. All right? So that's problem 1. So remember, we talked about this indeterminate form and that our strategy should be to start by direct substitution and see what it gives us. If it had given us, if it had given us 1, over 0 or 90 over 0 or something else other than 0 over 0, we wouldn't have the suspicion that we had this hole in our function. All right, so here's our next problem. We're going to evaluate this. So let's evaluate this. Evaluate the limit of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Can you see what's going to happen here? Um, so here I'm already looking at this, but I wasn't thinking clearly enough because, look, they're asking me this. What happens as the limit approaches zero? Well, just do direct substitution, and we'd get zero minus one over zero squared minus one, which is negative one over negative one, which is just equal to one. And you're going to find this a lot. You really are. When you're taking the AP uh Calc A, B exam, you're going to find that there are going to be these multiple choice questions that if you just try the simplest solution first, it's going to come up because they can't have every single question on the multiple choice part be a problem that's so intricate. So you're going to end up with a problem like this that's a gift. So be prepared to take that gift. All right? So here, the limit of this function as x approaches 0 is this thing right here. It's just equal to 1. All right? All right, let's look at another one. And this one is a lot trickier, so I just wanted to introduce it to you. 
uh, and ask you to evaluate this one. So here we have evaluate the limit. And this is just weird looking. Of the square root of x minus 3 over x minus 9. And we want this limit as x approaches 9. So x approaches 9. Well, we do our direct substitution again. We say x approaches 9, so we put 9 here. <coughs> Excuse me, we put 9 here. And we have square root of 9, which is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 9 minus 9 is 0. So we have this indeterminate form again. That's got to be a clue to us. That's got to tell us. That's got to tell us that this thing is factorable. However, this is not that algebra that we're used to, I don't think. So what we have to do is play this little game with it. And what we're going to do is use something called the conjugate. And I'm, I'm hoping you're aware of this thing. So what I'm going to do here is this. Look what's going to happen here. Check this out. I wonder if you can see this. I hate that square root right there. I see this square root. And then I see a negative 3. I'm like, you know what? If I multiply by the conjugate, the conjugate of this would be square root of x minus this 3. And of course, that's okay to do because look, square root of x minus 3. So this is, we're just really just multiplying by 1, aren't we? Just doing a little bit of trick algebra here. But look what happens. If you, when you foil this out, look, you'll get the square root of x times the square root of x, which is just x, isn't it? And because it's a conjugate, oops, sorry, this should be a plus, shouldn't it? Sorry, guys. Right, it should be the opposite. So this is a minus, this should be a plus, and vice versa, okay? So if we foil this, we see that this is, in the weirdest way, difference of squares, isn't it? That we're going to get positive 3 square roots of x minus 3 square roots of x, which is 0, isn't it? Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Over, right, we got this. When we foiled, when we foiled this, this was our solution here. We are not going to multiply this at all. We're just going to use, we know that this factor is here, so I'm going to take this factor, this x minus 9 right here, yeah, and it goes back down into the denominator where it was, and then this was the other factor, right? Because we had to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number to multiply it by 1. But look what happens. This factors out and this, and we end up with 1 over the square root of x plus 3. And probably going, what the hell do I care? You care a ton because look what's about to happen here. We, we want to know what happens as x approaches 9. Now we can go back to direct substitution, take this 9, and say, well, what happens? We get 9. Well, 1. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. The limit is 1 sixth, right? Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Look, I know that especially this crap right here is not easy. It's worth it, though. And I'm looking for your comments, and I'll put more of them up because you... We can't neglect this, and we can't pretend that it's not going to happen. We're going to see this on that exam. We have to prepare ourselves for it. The more times you see it, the better you'll get at it. So try not to turn your back on it just yet, okay, you guys? All right. Keep working hard.